A tough loss for the Wildcats on the road as they pick up their second Big 12 loss of the season here in Ames tonight. 78-67 to the final score. Mason Voth and Drew Galloway from K-State Online here with you as K-State got down double digits pretty quick in the game. Cam Carter was in foul trouble 36 seconds in. He picked up two. He sat for a very long time. And when he got back into the game, there was kind of an immediate perk to the offense that came about. But he had a sip for so long, it kind of negated things in the first half. Second half, K-State came out strong. They got the game tied at one point in the second half. But it seemed like every time one Derek Young looked at me and said, do they take the lead here? Either a catastrophic turnover happened or something negative for K-State, and they were never able to actually take the lead in this game. Then free throws became a killer down the stretch. David Gasson missed some crucial ones. He had kind of rectified his issue at the line for a little bit of a stretch there. It came back in a vicious way at the end. Tyler Perry also missed a free throw. And then a bunch of other things went down in this game that involved the free throw line, officiating, and other things. And it culminated with Jerome Tang getting a technical foul with just over two minutes left to play. And so instead of two free throws, it had turned into four for Iowa State. And it was all kind of one big mess. I will say this, though. At the end of the day, two Big 12 losses for K-State. And while it does feel like officiating has been pretty putrid and a pretty big storyline in those losses – it's indicative of what K-State is and how they've played in these games. The margin of error is so thin for this K-State team that if they do not play up to a certain level and they are capable of playing below that level that you need to win, then they are going to give it enough to keep the game close and competitive. But when they're losing, they are leaving too many things into the hands of the officials. The loss at Texas Tech and the loss in Ames tonight very easily could have turned into wins if things go their way one way or the other. The problem is K-State just wasn't good enough on these nights to overcome that. They leave it to the hands of the officiating, and tonight it's Iowa State shooting 16 more free throws than K-State and just some kind of head-scratching calls, one of which led to a Jerome Tang technical foul. I mean, uh, I'll even add in that Iowa State shot more free throws in the second half than K-State shot the entire game. So, I mean, that, that's kind of indicative of how things went on that end. But K-State had the game tied five times, and like you said, every time it was either a bad turnover or a rushed shot, and it just felt like K-State could never get over the hump. And it's one where, kind of like the Texas Tech game, where this game, I, I don't know if you count this as an outlier, but it's another close game where K-State didn't make the plays down the stretch where you've seen it happen over and over and over. But is this going to be a recurring theme on the road? Another one of our keys going into the game was K-State had to get two of the three of the big three that they have going. And to be honest, it was kind of just the Arthur Kaluma show. Cam Carter was in foul trouble early. I think after the first 36 seconds, we should have, yeah. thought, we should have, knew, we should have known how this game was going to go. Uh, he was in foul trouble early. Tyler Perry missed some really big shots late, including missing missing a free throw. And I think that I'm the one that actually jinxed David Gasson, yeah. talking about how good he had been from the line, and that that's a guy that like you kind of felt comfortable with, oddly enough, even though he was 47 percent because he had been so uh, he had improved so much uh, of recent that it kind of that missed front end is probably the biggest swing of the game because you missed the front end. And then you foul on the other end. Iowa State's in a double bonus and hits both free throws. And that that kind of felt like game over at that point. Yeah, and for K-State, I mean, you come out and just guys struggling left and right early on. Will McNair, you watch him out there. He seemed unplayable. You put Jarrell Colbert in because you think, okay, maybe he's a little bit quicker. He's got more length. Maybe he can help you tonight. But – then you saw flashes of why Jarrell Colbert doesn't see the court for many minutes at a time. It's because there are some deficiencies there with his understanding of where he needs to be. And so that was one of those things that hurt K-State. And it all just really comes back around to what I said is K-State is not good enough to overcome some of these problems. They turn the ball over a lot early in the game. And that's going to continue to haunt them and hurt them. And at this point in the season, the turnover problem is what it is. You're not going to get any better at that. This team – doesn't play very smart at times. They are going to turn the ball over. It was an issue last year, too, and it, it just didn't really affect them as much because of the, the amount of talent. Because, as we're talking about, their two main guys last year showed up every single game. I mean, I think the only game where Marquise Noel probably wasn't in double figures last year 
was the Kansas game at home, which they won because Desi Sills went off for like 24. So you knew what you would get from your main guys last year. There's a little bit more variety to what you're going to get from your main guys this year in Kaluma, Carter, and Perry. And Tyler Perry's the guy that probably has to step up more than anybody. Hit two big threes in the second half, but didn't make another shot from the field after that. Was two of eight from the from the three, two of nine from the floor. Disaster there. One other thing that we have to hit on is Jerome Tang and TJ Altsberg after the end of the game. They had quite the handshake. Uh, there was a period, probably at the under eight timeout, where Something appeared to be going on behind the K-State bench. It seems like it probably revolved around a fan. Neither of them wanted to address the topic. Here's what I will say about that. Both of you just man up, and you don't have to be the bigger man here. If somebody was being an idiot, thus a fan or whoever else, say it, or at least give us some context to the situation. You could even just say that it was a fan incident and just leave it there. Because it doesn't help anybody to not know what went down there. And it's going to continue to linger, and then people will start to think about, well, it was actually more about between you guys, because they both tried to clear it up and say, hey, it's not a Jerome Tang versus T.J. Otzelberger thing. It was something else. They both avoided the situation. I would have preferred they addressed it even a little bit. They did not tonight. It is what it is. We'll just see how things work out in the, the future. I'll also throw in, just kind of getting back to the game for a second, that it's another one where Casey loses, and the rebounding was a big problem, especially defensive rebounding. This team is a very good offensive rebounding team, but they have to figure something out on the defensive glass. Probably the the biggest shot of the game was was off of an offensive rebound by Iowa State that led to a kickout three to put the Cyclones up five, and that, that game kind of felt like the dagger. And then when Tyler Perry goes one of two from the free throw line, that really hurts. Yep, rebounding, a struggle for K-State. Their road trip will not get any easier. Saturday, 11 a.m., they will tip off in the Fertitta Center down in Houston against the top five ranked Cougars. It's going to feel like a totally different week for K-State if they aren't able to salvage a win on this road trip. And then you go into a must-win situation at home next Tuesday against Oklahoma. We'll see how they play. One thing I will add at the end of this, K-State does end up losing by double digits in this game, 78-67. to It was closer than the final score reflected. Morale and everybody's feeling after this game, it should be a lot different than what it felt like it was going to be in the first half. It felt like in the first half you were going to walk out of here or be sitting at home and going, man, K-State just didn't have it tonight. They got embarrassed, and they fought back, they battled, and they've shown that no matter who it is on their schedule this year, they can compete and battle with them. It's just a matter now they have to learn how to overcome some of that on the road. We've seen them do it at home against Baylor, against Oklahoma State. Now you have to step up and do it on the road because, admittedly, the first road trip of the year, you beat West Virginia. Not like that's the toughest team in this league to beat. You get an opportunity to start proving yourself on Saturday against Houston, and certainly isn't out of the question that the Cats can get it done. I've seen much worse American Athletic Conference teams win games in that building, and K-State, they're better than a lot of those teams in the AAC. So that will do it for Drew Galloway and myself, Mason Both. Thank you for watching K-State Online. Full coverage of the Cats and Clones over at kstateonline.com with On3, plus plenty of other K-State news for you.